Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming out for this meeting for Calvary Christian Academy. I'm, I'm grateful to see you all here, and uh, I'm going to open us in, in prayer, and then we'll get started. Uh, Lord, we thank you so much uh, for what you're doing and what you're, what you're piecing together and bringing together uh, and providing us a way of um, discipling kids and training kids and teaching kids, Lord, to to love you with all their heart, soul, mind and strength and to love your word and to also uh, achieve just uh, academic excellence. And Lord, we're grateful for uh, Calvary Christian Academy and we look forward to where you're going to take it. And how you're going to use it in the life of our church and in uh, the life of families, Lord, and in the life of our community. And so, Lord, we thank you and we commit this time to you now in Jesus name. Amen. So um, we are very excited at what the Lord is doing uh, through Calvary Christian Academy and how the Lord is is putting all of this together uh, and and where he is leading us. Uh, as a church, um, you know, starting a school from scratch, from the ground up, is a huge task. Uh, and it really requires the right person to lead that task, to, um, to assemble the right team of people that can come together to, uh, to do all of the necessary things that are required to get a get a school started, uh, and the right person that can, uh, you know, bring together all of the necessary tools and uh, and people and pieces and parts and the organizational piece that's required and necessary uh, for this, um, and so that really is uh, for us. That was kind of the first piece of we need that person uh, that can really spearhead this and lead this for us, and so. Uh, I'm excited to officially introduce Chelsea Mide as the grammar school administrator. Uh, and she is the one who's, who's leading the way on this for us uh, and putting all of this together. So please give Chelsea a warm welcome as she comes up to share with us. Well, I was not expecting that introduction, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Um, it is totally a team effort and a ministry of this church, and there are so many people that have already come alongside, and um, so I'm just so thankful for all the people that the Lord has provided and is continuing to provide as we build this school to bring Him glory and to come alongside and to train and disciple these kids um, with you, parents. Um, what an honor it is. Um, so I just wanted to read Colossians 2. Uh, Verses 6 through 10, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power." And really, at Calvary Christian Academy, we are committed to our students being discipled to a real, authentic faith in Christ with an excellent, rigorous education, ready for and equipped for whatever God's calling is on their next step in life. So we're, we're very excited about that. We are thrilled that you are here. We are thrilled to see what the Lord is going to do, how he is going to lead us, um, and just I'm excited for you to hear about where we are in the process um, and where we're going, what our next steps is as we move forward with a start date of September 2024. Um, and with that said, I would love for you to start off this meeting by meeting some of the amazing team that the Lord has brought together already. Um, if a team can come up and then I can go ahead and just introduce, give a little background to myself too, and then we'll get to meet, put faces to everyone. So um, as Dan said, my name is Chelsea Mide. I've been here for about 18, 18 and a half years um, here at Calvary Chapel. My family started coming here as soon as we moved to Maryland. Um, the Lord has given me quite a background. I've always had a passion for kids and education, um, working at a school from high school pretty much on 
in many different capacities, private school, daycare, uh, Christian school, and then most recently the public school system. Um, I've always had a passion for building relationships with staff and students and the kids, and um, the piece that was always missing was Jesus. And so now we get to have that all and to just be able to come alongside parents and disciple them to um, train them in God's word and the foundational truths of God's word is truly an honor. So I'm so excited. Um, and here I have Carson. Hi, I'm Carson Smith. Um, my wife Tammy and I have been here attending at CCEC for since 2021. Um, I have about a 20-year background in higher education, but um, have really witnessed the fruit that has come from a classical Christian education in my own kids. And so um, just from that and seeing how um, my wife and they have come through that and have just borne so much fruit, um, I'm behind this 100%. Hi there. My name is Tammy Smith. Um, I'm also part of the board with Carson and with, um, with others. Um, my very quick background is the Lord drew us out of the public school education with our own children and said, I'm going to give you something new a little over seven years ago. And so um, if classical um, Christian education is new for you, hang in there because um, most of us learned it that way as well. So you can learn it as well. Um, the Lord taught us very quickly, very deeply, equipped us, brought people to encourage us along the way. We've seen such fruit in our own children. We have um, a ninth, a tenth, and a twelfth grade um, children. And um, it's just been a joy to see a love of learning and how this model of education has really just been um, just a lovely path forward, I would say, for our children. So we're excited to tell you about it. Um, please ask us if you have more questions, but we're excited to teach you more about it. Thank you, Tammy. I'm Joe Amy. Uh, I've been coming to Calvary Chapel, Ellicott City now for a little over eight years. Um, I'm an accountant. I'm a finance person. Uh, my experience really is finance and administration, not education. Uh, but I'm very excited to see what the Holy Spirit's going to do. Uh, my role, in whatever role he wants me to play here, however I can support this, this venture and this team, I'm just very excited about it. Uh, my children are adults, and watching what the Holy Spirit has done with the children here and the way that children who have grown up in the Word reflect Jesus and, and stand out in this world is so amazing. Anything that I can do to, to participate in that, it's exciting to me, and I, I can't wait to see what the Holy Spirit does with all of the kids and, and with all of us supporting it. I'm Kelly Kanapik. Um, my husband and I have been at Calvary Ellicott City for about four years, and uh, we've been at a Calvary, another Calvary Chapel um, prior to this as well, and we have one son and another on the way. And uh, I have a background in social work, but my husband and I have also just been involved with the kids' ministry um, at various churches throughout the years. I'm just excited about teaching them God's word and that it's exciting. And um, I'm on kind of a background team of just providing um, any kind of support in looking over documents, reviewing processes, providing feedback like that. I am Chardonnay Peterson. Um, I have been attending Calvary uh, Ellicott City for 10 years. My husband's been coming here for 16 years. Um, we have three children, um, a six-year-old, a five-year-old, and a one-and-a-half-year-old. Um, I work in children's ministry here, so you probably see me running around on Sundays <laughs> in all the classrooms. Um, I am on the core team also, just looking over documents and making sure Words make words, um, and everything sounds cohesive. Um, so if it doesn't, that was probably me. Um, but, I mean, we've been praying about a school here for years. I remember talking was it three years ago um, on an Israel trip about how cool would it be if there was school. Um, and so to see it come to fruition and to be able to be a part of it is just like an absolute blessing that I can't even put into words. So I'm, I'm Dan. <laughs> um, so I, I, you know, we have always, uh, through the years, talked about uh, how great it would be to have a school here. And uh, it's just mm -hmm. it's just neat to see the Lord's timing and to see how the Lord is bringing it together and is bringing uh, 
people together and this team together, and I know others will come along as well uh, to be part of this. So we're excited to just see what the Lord does with it. And I'm Cameron. We have three boys, and um, 18, six, almost 18, 16 and 13. And when we were having our children, we were living far away from our family, and we had those babies in this body. And there were godly women and men who came alongside us and said, these are the most important things to do as a parent, like teach your kids about Jesus every day and took us to Deuteronomy where it told us when, how, how often, and stayed right beside us and walked us through those early years and taught us how to, to train them up and train them up in a way that they should go. Not the way they will always go, but they should go. And that was our responsibility and our privilege and our great blessing. And so, you know, our heart, and then we've homeschooled our kids all the way through. So we've seen a lot of different kinds of education communities and um, really have learned a lot, great best practices and things to do, things not to do. And and so we're, our hope would always be to, to provide just the best that the body of Christ has to offer for families of kids and for the children themselves and to just have the joy of the Lord. He is their strength. And to keep that focus just tightly on Jesus and to be able to come alongside families as people did to come alongside us as we were in those early years. They're so formidable. And um, and then just godly people have been alongside us in raising our children. And so we have such um, a grateful heart about you and about this body and just the the wraparound, the emotional, the physical, the spiritual wraparound that this body provides to, to one another. And to be able to do that as a school, you know, as a, as a sister, a sibling ministry to this church, not separate, but part of the body life here. It just is an exciting thought. And so we just want to spread it around in that way. I'm Dave. And this is my wife, Catherine. Uh, we found this wonderful body of believers 10 years ago now. And as many of you know, I retired from the military last year and uh, have come on staff to help out Dan. So when we initially talked about me coming on staff, the school was part of that discussion. So we're excited to be at the, at the point in the process where um, it's becoming more than just a skeleton or more than just an idea. Uh, we have four boys, and Catherine has faithfully homeschooled them in uh, the classical Christian style. Um, so I'll let her tell you more about that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> as David shared, we started, uh, well, we were introduced to the classical style of education about 10 years ago. Um, the year we had only been homeschooling for one year, so our second year homeschooling, we were introduced to the classical style. I just absolutely fell in love with it, and we have not turned back um, from that from that time with that. Um, one of the things I love about the classical style is that it really, um, it utilizes um, where your kids, where the kids are naturally in their development, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, but beside being able to be with my kids, disciple my kids, um, just loving, just teaching them um, in a way where they're already naturally geared to learn. And so, anyways, and I, th I would say my role really is to just be supportive and a cheerleader for this team, uh, maybe um, curriculum advisor a little bit with the different curriculums that we've used, the classical style that we've used. So it's neat to see what God's doing and a privilege to be a part of what God is doing here. So, yes. Hi, I'm Kaylin Webb. Um, my husband and I have been coming here for about three years. In that time, we had our little uh, three-month-old son. And I get the privilege of uh, being a part of the core team. And I'm just really excited that I love Jesus, I love the Bible, and I love kids. And to put all those three together and train up the kids in the way they should go and write these things on their heart is such an honor and privilege to be a part of. And so we hope you're excited as well. <laughs> so this is the Lord, who, the team that the Lord has assembled. And we're just so thankful to get to know you more and to talk to you more about where we are in the process, and um, if you ever have any questions, these are people to come to. So now that you have faces to the names, um, then I'm going to pass it over to Carson. All right. Okay. So I get to tell you why. Why are we doing this? And time is short. You know your own life is just a vapor, 
and you know that the time that you have with your kids as that vapor is passing is even just a glimpse of this moment, right, that you have to pour into them. Um, so the other aspect of time is short is that the return of the Lord is imminent. And we're living in days where we believe that the Lord could return at any moment, any day. could be today. If not today, probably tomorrow. And so we want to redeem this time. So um, see that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So we want to use this time to redeem um, and train our kids to know the Lord Jesus, first of all, and to have a sound mind. Um, I just want to read um, one other verse to you. Um, Jesus reminds us in Matthew 7, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. And at Calvary Christian Academy, um, our number one priority is going to be to build our children upon the rock of Jesus Christ so that anything that comes their way, they will not fall and they'll be able to stand. All right, so how are we going to do these things? First off, you get to see our mission statement, um, Calvary Christian Academy. We don't want to take kiddos away from their families or from their parents. God has given parents that authority to train up these kiddos. And so we want to partner with families to disciple students and the knowledge of God through Jesus Christ by developing not a societal-based perspective or a scientific outlook, but a Bible-based worldview, a biblical worldview because the Bible is our ultimate authority and so that's how we want to produce the spiritual excellence and so how again are we going to do that specifically and within our logo we have three main points and so the first one I get to share is abide. John 15 4 says abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me. Abide simply just meaning to stay or remain or dwell, reside, make permanent home. Everyone is looking for a place to reside. Our kiddos are looking for a place to belong. That empty hole in our hearts can lead us to anything and everything simply just to be fulfilled. But as John 15 continues, it says, without Christ, you can do nothing. And really, there is nowhere else we can go. There is no one else we can turn to. As the disciples realized in John 6, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Here at CCA, we're not here to show students the right things to say or hold the right beliefs or to even have a proper attitude or behavior or even to have a superficial interaction with Jesus. We want to establish and show them what it means to have a life abiding in Christ with a relationship that is rooted and grounded in him. And so that's what it will look like for us to model what it means to abide in Christ and to teach students to do the same. So secondly, Chardonnay gets to share. All right, so we will equip. Um, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that, man, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work, 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. Uh, so we want to be able to equip the students to be able to deal with how loud the world is and what the world is telling them that they should be doing and believing, um, but we know it's not actually correct. So we want to be able to equip our students with the Bible verses, like Dan was talking about today. You should be able to have those verses on your heart so when you are met with something and it sounds wrong, but you can't remember why it's wrong, we want to equip them so that they know biblically this is not what the Bible says and they have a scripture that can back it up or they know how to look it up. Um, but we also want to equip the parents. This is a team sport. This is not just us. Um, and it's not just us with your kiddos. It's your kids and you also. So Kelly is going to introduce our next. Yes, the last piece here is contend. We also want to prepare students to contend earnestly for their faith. 
And this uh, comes from Judah 1, 3. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning your common concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once uh, for all delivered to the saints. So uh, again, these three pieces, and we have contend earnestly for their faith um, in this world that we know is so necessary and vital for them. So what other, aside from um, being a Christian school, what some of the things that make Calvary Christian Academy a little distinctive are that we are an education ministry serving our church body. This is a ministry of our church. We're, um, this is a fruit of our church. And so because of that, our body gets to partner, I mean, and to come alongside in so many ways, like Cameron was talking about, just enveloping these families, just coming alongside, teaching them, showing them, learning, um, looking, seeing, you know, the Bible tells us to mark an exa- for us an example. And I know there are so many ladies in my life that I've seen how their families are, and I've seen how they, um, their relationships with their kids are and what they do. And I'm like, yes, Lord, those are the examples. And so we have so many of that in our church, and that's what our school gets to be, right? Our staff just coming alongside, um, knowing what's going on in each other's lives. Um, it's a, also a classical Christian education based on discipleship. Um, it's set apart in from schools because we are discipleship, a discipleship school. Hmm, okay, our aim is to provide a loving, Christ-centered atmosphere that complements a godly home. Right? We take the time to teach and train each child in the ways of the Lord, because as God's word tells us, train up a child in the way he should go, and in the end, he will not depart for it. Our goal is to assist the parents in raising their children in the ways of the Lord. Our desire is that during school hours. Teachers disciple students in fulfilling the greatest commandment given to us in Scripture, which is to love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. We will establish God's word. We know that God's word is the ultimate authority in our lives. We know that, and we get to instill that in the kids. We get to teach them what God's word says. So like when Chardonnay's was, was talking about when they have these situations, God's word is hidden in their hearts and they know what is right because they know the truth because it has been taught to them. And how will they know if they're not taught, right? We get to pour into these kids and these grammar school years. They're just soaking up and absorbing everything. We get to pour into them the truths of God's words so that as they continue to grow, and we'll talk a little bit more about how the whole classical Christian education builds with that. As these kids continue to grow, God's word is in their hearts. They know what God's word says. They're going to be surrounded in it. Um, Our congregation is going to be integrated into all aspects of our school. We have so many, our body has so many gifts. The Lord has gifted each of us so many ways, and so we get to come alongside and use those gifts for him. Um, They're going to be integrated into all aspects of school school life. Um, We'll be on campus four days a week, and then Wednesdays we'll be at home for families to be involved with their kids' lives, involved in what's going on, um, discipleship, um, field trips, rest, Teachers will have a day to be at home, to be uh, working. It'll be a time for them to also be um, getting their work done and planning. Um, And then, sorry, losing my place here. Another thing that makes us different, CCA students will. We'll experience hands-on study of the natural world through the scientific method. Students learn best by being involved in what they're doing, learning, being hands-on, experimenting, talking, communicating. Um, We'll be reading and enjoying classical literature containing beauty, goodness, and truth. And we'll hear a little bit more about that from uh, Tammy and Catherine. Develop a love of learning and imagination. When your teachers are filled with joy, when when the people around you are filled with joy and have that excitement spilling out, it excites who you're talking to. And that will be so translated to the kids in these classrooms and in the people that are coming alongside. The, we have the joy of Jesus, um, and that affects these kids. They get excited, too. We'll learn godly characteristic and habits. And most importantly, these kids will be learning the foundational truths of God's unchanging word 
to develop a biblical worldview. Jesus is not just sprinkled into the curriculum here and there. Rather, he is in the very center of everything that we do. All subjects, all conversations are taught through the lens of Scripture, and God's Word is our ultimate authority. When each subject area is subjected to Christ, this helps students own and defend their faith while viewing the world in the truth of Christ. So we are committed to our students being discipled to have a real authentic faith in Jesus um, and to know whatever God's calling is, that's the way that we should go. And so I have Catherine and Tammy just to talk a little bit more about what that's going to look like practically. So, um, yep, here we go. Next. Okay, so the trivium. Um, when we first started our classical school journey, there were all these different ro- words thrown out to us, and I'm like, what does that mean? Like, I just felt like it was a lot of um, new vocab. So the trivium, which you see up here, um, it kind of, it, um, it's um, a word meaning three ways, three ways that are coming together. And so for us, um, that's talking about the grammar stage, um, which we'll talk about uh, the grammar stage, the, the logic or dialectic stage, and the rhetoric stage. So I'm going to talk with you a little bit about the grammar stage, what we have, um, the, or the roots of the tree. So with the roots, um, you need strong, strong roots, building. Um, these are like the building blocks, the foundational level of when you're, when you're teaching, um, when we're teaching these kiddos. It's um, the building blocks where they're gaining understanding. It might look like memorizing math facts or data, um, learning new vo- vocabulary or terms, just the basic skills of life. Um, that, for us, like when my kiddos were younger, that looks like, um, like, using songs to memorize their multiplication facts or reading um, a book uh, where they were learning new vocabulary. But if you think about kids at this level, you think about your own kids or your grandkids, and they're bringing you back the same book. Okay, Good Night Moon. We, my child has this book memorized, but that's the book he would always go back and bring to me, and he wanted me to read that over and over again. So kids naturally at this level, they're wanting the repetition. They're um, the and um, um, like the, just naturally, they're wanting to. They're wanting the repetition. They're wanting the songs. They're wanting the chance. Like they and playing games. Like those are all ways that they are naturally learning at this level. So the grammar stage is um, kindergarten through sixth grade. Sixth grade is kind of like where it's graying or moving into the logic phase. So um, sixth graders will start to begin asking the questions, which will move us into the logic or the dialectic stage. So if we want to, yep, here we go, the trunk. So when you have um, strong, firm roots, um, the roots are going to need to hold up the trunk and so without those strong roots, the trunk is not going to be able to stand. So the logic or another term that you might hear or read is called dialectic. And that really is seventh and eighth grade, um, kind of the blending six moving into seventh and eighth, a little bit in ninth grade. But um, the, logic, the logic stage or dialectic stage is where they're discovering and they're starting to u- utilize um, these building blocks. They've, they've um, grown in understanding now. They're asking questions. They're figuring out the what and the why of, of things that they're, um, that they're learning or using. Um, they start to develop skills in speech and debate, which is really exciting because don't we all have or know a teenager that loves to argue, right? Naturally, that's where they're at. They're asking why. They want to know the whys and the hows of these things. So um, uh, that for in our family, definitely like the learning how to argue and the learning of the speech and the debate, but also writing persuasive essays. Um, they're able to tell you why eating breakfast for dessert is, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, eating dessert for breakfast is reasonable, right? So that's just um, some of the ways that, you know, we experience those things in our house. I'm going to let Tammy talk to you about rhetoric, the rhetoric phase. Awesome. Thank you, Catherine. Oh, oh, and I was just going to, I'm sorry, I'm just going to direct you. All of you received um, this book or this um, folder here. And um, when you are able to dive into that folder, I was just going to point out um, page 14 and 15 actually go talks more in depth about the trivium if you want to learn more about that. And of course, we're here to ask or answer any questions. Sounds great. Thank you. I'm going to keep that open. 
So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the rhetoric phase. So as you can see, the rhetoric builds into the high school years. Um, it's not the same word that you know of rhetoric, right? But it's those years that you're, you're taking the knowledge that they've had in those grammar years, and they're gaining understanding in those seventh and eighth grade years. And then now you're building it into wisdom. And this is the time where they start assimilating all of these facts. They're, they're still asking very good questions, but now they're able to articulate it back to you, what they really stand, what is God's word, is our whole goal, right, is the ultimate authority is always going to be God's word. What does God's word say about this? What does God's word say about that, right? They're going to learn really good literature, and they're going to say, does that character line up with what God's word would say? Why or why not? Um, and so you're going to see a lot of those types of discussions. So classical education is very much a um, conversational type of education. And so at this point, you're going to see um, that they're really not only just um, getting basic facts, but now they know how to research and dig into their own information, and then now they can articulate it back to you. And as she mentioned, in those middle school years, they're learning how to persuade, right? And we're, we're really um, unapologetically um, persuading for Christ, right, as, as the bottom line. We want them to know who is Jesus Christ, and then we want to make him known. Um, so that's the, the basic heartbeat of these years. But um, typically in this type, um, I've already kind of mentioned what the skills are, but very often um, the classical model will end in something called a senior thesis. Um, and so that's really where they pull all the skills from the grammar phase through the logic and dialectic phase through that lasting portion um, where they get to defend a stance on something where they have to speak in front of others and actually articulate and then having questions come back at them, they can then stand there, defend their faith, and move on. So that's just one example of something that might happen um, maybe around that, that 12th grade year. So as you see, that's kind of the bearing fruit or the leaves that you'll see in our picture. Um, so when Catherine and I were talking about this, because the, the vocabulary for the trivium and classical um, Christian education is so new, what is grammar, what is logic, what is rhetoric, we both found it very helpful to um, actually say, gosh, these actually go with the way that God's wired children, but you actually could probably think about a situation where you've learned something new. And so, for example, if you were gardening, right, in the, in the logic years, to parallel it with just natural learning of God, how the way that the Lord has wired us all to learn, um, in those grammar years, you might learn terms for gardening. You might learn something about soil acidity or sunlight or spacing of seeds, just facts, right? And then if you bring that into that logic dialectic type of phase, you're going to learn um, what plants grow well and in what soil. You might ask, um, what's going to cause a plant to die in a certain environment and what's going to cause a plant to thrive? in a certain environment. So you're asking those questions. And then by the time you get to the rhetoric phase of that learning, you might say, gosh, I'm going to actually plant a tomato plant for myself. I'm going to watch this grow. I'm going to tend to it like I've just been reading it. And actually, at the very end, I'm going to produce a tomato that we can serve for our family. Or you can tell someone else about how you went through that process. And so you can kind of see anything that you've learned new. You've kind of had to learn the grammar or the vocabulary of something. You had to start asking some questions. And then you can then produce something at the end. So um, please um, feel free to look at page 14, 15. Ask us for any questions that you might have afterwards. Otherwise, Dave, I think, are you next? Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Tammy. And Catherine. All right. So you've got to meet the team. You've got to hear our mission and vision. You've heard about some of the distinctives of the school and the methodology that we're going to go about teaching children. And now I get to share the fun stuff with you. We're going to start with kindergarten through second grade. So uh, we'll have three classes, three teachers. Uh, we will be located here in this building. So that is how we are planning to start the school. Again, the school is not going to start this fall, but the following fall. So in 2024 will be our first classes here. Uh, as you can look kind of at the timeline there, uh, we plan to add one grade per year, which would allow us to graduate our first class in 2035 you want to do that math. Uh, that is the goal. Obviously, we'll, we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading and how he might uh, change that as time goes on. And as most of us know, we can set a plan, but, but usually the Lord doesn't allow the plan that we come up with in the beginning to be the, the way that he actually allows things to play out. 
Uh, looking at the fourth year, which would be 2027, we would plan to, in addition to adding a grade and a teacher per year, we would add a, a full-time secretary. And then in 2028, we would add a second administrator, which would be a principal for uh, the K through six, and then through K through eighth um, school is the plan right now. So looking at tuition, I think everyone wants the ideal private school where there's low tuition, the teachers get paid lots of money, and the classroom sizes are small. And in reality, that school doesn't exist. However, I think the Lord is allowing us to get pretty close to that. We are uh, planning a projected tuition for the 24-25 school year of $6,500, which would also have an additional $250 material fee right now. Uh, by comparison, if you look at tuition across our area, uh, well, actually, back that out. So the Association of Classical Christian Schools is an association that we have become affiliated with uh, that kind of oversees classical Christian education across our nation. There's over 400 schools that are um, part of that organization. And if you look at the tuition, that is the average tuition of those schools is about $9,000 per year. And then just looking in our area, Rockbridge is part of that association as well, ACCS. They are probably the premier classical Christian school um, in the, on the Eastern Seaboard, um, certainly in our area. Their tuition is $15,000 per year. Chapel Gate is not a classical Christian school, but it's also in our area. Their tuition is about $12,000 per year. Um, and Cornerstone Chapel, which is a Calvary Chapel in Leesburg, Virginia, I think we were, we were just mentioning that um, Jim O'Keefe is coming from there to teach our men. Uh, this next month. They're starting a school this this coming fall. Their tuition will be $8,200 a year. So just, you know, we're able to offer a, a little bit lower tuition than, than some of the other schools in the area. One of the reasons we're able to do that is because we are co-located with the church. We're not in a separate building. So the church is covering our facility fees. That keeps, keeps it lower. Um, so then looking at teacher salary, uh, by setting the tuition at $6,500, that still allows us to offer our teachers a salary that's comparable to the average national salary for teachers and the, uh, the average salary within our local area in the state of Maryland. Um, so that's a good thing. And then class ratio size, again, because we are limited to the facility that we have here, those classrooms will be one teacher with two with 10 students each. And so as long as we're located in this facility, uh, we will keep a small teacher to student ratio. Um, speaking of facilities, so after 2026, we will get to the point where we'll outgrow this space. So that's definitely a prayer request, even starting now, that we can be praying over is, where would God have us move? Um, because this is an education ministry of the church, it's ideal that we stay co-located as a school with our church, and uh, that would mean everything would have to move. But we don't know where that might be or when that might be. Uh, we just know kind of a general time frame of when we will outgrow this space. So you can be praying about that with us. And I think that is all I had to share with you, and I'll be followed by Cameron and Joe Amy who are going to talk to you about different ways that you can get involved other than enrolling your student at the school. So one of the ways that we've really dreamed, dreams of um, sharing Jesus with kids and families is by, I, I mentioned it in my little pre-speech about um, the church it not being a separate ministry, that it's all the body of Christ. And in the same way that we're helping serve one another on Thursday night's dinner, for example, right? We're coming through a line. There's servants of God in the kitchen preparing that meal. There's servants of God dishing out that food. We're sitting together family style in the fellowship hall. It's a, it's a community feeling, right? It's a, and we want, to, that we, we want that to arc over the whole uh, everything we do here at Calvary, including the school. And so in our minds, this is so integrated, the body of Christ, whether you're a student, whether you're a parent of the school, an educator in the school, that it's really just part of body life. 
here. And so part of that would include things like praying for, for the school as a ministry of your church, an outreach ministry, in the same way that we pray for missionaries overseas and parachurch ministries in our community, the radio. We, the, the school is a, is a big ministry to the kingdom of God. We were hoping to create kingdom kids, you know, kids that would stand for the truth, that would that enjoy Jesus, that would evangelize the lost and um, live for Jesus. So that's, we need your prayers. The kids need your prayers. The parents need your prayers. All the, the families involved, that there would be righteousness that would reign and that um, truth would reign and that um, families would be edified and that we would say hard things in love and um, and encourage one another and build each other up even more as the, we see the day approaching. So we're kind of skipping over to that prayer warrior piece because really um, this is the linchpin, right? Dan, you talked about that this morning in your message, Dan, like just that the prayer um, of the saints, the prayers of the saints are effective, and we want God to be in the middle. We want um, to walk rightly before him and and model that, and we, so we need purity in our own lives and all those things, so we need prayer, prayer warrior support from the body of Christ, and I'm going to talk about classroom mentor, family mentor, academic mentor. One of the things, you know, in the classroom, this is more than just a mom, a room mom, although those are fun. Mom rooms, uh, room moms are fun because they get to bring in, you know, so many layers of love to that classroom that supports that teacher. But really, we're looking for that discipleship piece to be the standout difference in our school, the distinctive. So what about that family? who is just in a crisis? Or what about that family who just seems to be on, you know, a, a, in a season of deeper need um, and just could have a classroom mentor that could come alongside and support that family, support that teacher, support that student, and, um, and just love on them extra with that extra measure of God's grace. That's what we're doing here already for one another and just bringing that into that classroom. So maybe you don't have a student in that classroom. Maybe your kids are grown. That's a great place for you to invest in that next generation of that next layer of students and parents. And um, all the mamas and daddies, they need the loving too as they're raising those children. Um, and the family mentor, maybe, maybe there's a family or two or maybe all the families. Wouldn't it be so great if every family in our school had a family mentor? You know, somebody that could come alongside. I can't even imagine raising my kids without the body of Christ. My goodness, how much we would have been on the struggle bus half the time. But instead, I mean, not every day was rosy, but most days were. They were a joy. They were a delight. We loved our kids. We were told to. Somebody, the older women came alongside and taught the younger woman, who was me, how to love my children, keep her at home, love my husband. And those kind of mentor relationships that, that you know, my husband had men pouring into him, teaching him how to, to lead a family. And those kinds of mentors to the families in our school, just that personal attention to, to detail about what does the Bible say? Children are a blessing. They're a reward. They're a heritage. Like this whole feeling. It is countercultural to count children as a blessing. But we know that God's reward is children. And so to train these families to love and enjoy their children and to um, be that family mentor, that classroom mentor, and of course, academic mentors for the students um, who need extra academic support, we have some brainiacs in this body. You know, one of the things I love about this, that the Lord, one of the things I think he's doing as we are watching this, this heartbeat of a dream that was kind of this small heartbeat for years coming louder and louder. And then now it's like, oh, the time is here. You know, like we're doing it is watching this body literally grow before our eyes. If you have gone to this church more than three weeks, you have seen this church growing. Think about the gifts and the talents, the knowledge base, the heart in these bodies that is walking in our door day by day. The, the explosion of opportunity for this body to knit itself together. How many layers of ministry are provided in this new opportunity, this new ministry that Calvary is starting? And as you're getting to know people that are coming new, you might be new, but guess what? If you've gone here more than a few months, you're the old people. <laughs> like you need to, you know, like we have so many gifts and talents and strengths, abilities, smarts, 
you know, to come alongside. So one of those ways would be with academic mentorship. If there was a student that had an excellent propensity for a, an academic study, what a wonderful mentor to have a, a real live linguist or a real live physicist or a real live scientist come alongside that student. And, or if a student just needed that extra support there's educators among us that could come alongside and, and provide that. So those are three ways that, um, that we see the body of Christ really giving, having a whole nother layer, a whole nother opportunity level to come alongside and do one-on-one -on -one discipleship. You know, that's on, you know, that's one of our core distinctives too as a church is to love Jesus, love others, and to make disciples. So it all works together. Thank you, Cameron. I'm going to go back to the, the top of my column here and talk quickly about prayer. A couple of other things. In addition to praying for the teachers and for the students and for the families, uh, any of you prayer warriors out there, my request would be that you include in that prayers for the administrators and the board. We should pray that they have godly wisdom, that they're open to the spirit, whatever direction the spirit decides to move this school in, this venture in, that the leadership is given godly wisdom. We should all also pray for prudence. Um, there's a fiduciary aspect of this, not just financially, but in terms of the responsibility to, to the families and to the children and to God to preach the word in truth. And the board and the, the administration have a responsibility to take leadership roles in that. Culture is the behavior that leaders allow to persist. So we should pray for the leadership and the board in that respect. Speaking quickly about the general giving, Dave had mentioned that it's primarily a tuition-financed school. Um, to the extent that people have a gift of giving, and there are members of this congregation that do have a gift of giving, if the Spirit put it on their heart to... to make gifts or offerings to the school, there are vehicles that have been set up to do that. That's available through the online giving application. But that's one of the things that helps enhance the opportunity for the children, enhance the, the types of, of things that are available to teach them, systems that are required, training for the teachers. Um, Dave mentioned keeping the operating expenses low so that the tuition is affordable is very important, especially since it's a, a ministry of the church. So there will be opportunities for general giving, and then there will be opportunities if the Spirit puts it on someone's heart to support a particular family that may be going through a difficult time with tuition. Um, that would be available, too. That's something that will be, you know, we would be able to, to help a, a giver facilitate on behalf of a family. But that's very important. This is this is such a worthwhile thing, it's so important, um, and it's also, it can be financially challenging. So that's something that, if the Spirit puts it on your heart to do, uh, that's something that we're going to be able to help accommodate. So, Chelsea. Thank you. Um, I also just wanted to quickly talk about, um, everyone got a folder in here. Um, so I just want to talk about what you have in your folder. So we have the Discover Classical Christian Education, um, which Tammy and Catherine briefly mentioned. This is a great resource. If this whole idea of like classical Christian education is new to you and you're not really sure what that means, what that looks like, this is a great resource just to dive into it really thoroughly, explains it, um, just as Tammy and Catherine, um, it's just a great resource to peruse and be like, okay, what is this exactly? What does this actually look like on a day-to-day -day basis? I don't really know what that means. Is that not just going to school? No. It's a whole, because the parents, the families are involved. It's something that um, you get to be a part of, too. Um, so that's a great resource to have and to look over and just to learn more and to talk about. Um, you have this little card. This is a great thing to stick on your fridge, just as you're walking by your fridge and you see it and you're like, just a different points and areas that you can be praying for Calvary Christian Academy. Um, we have it listed out in the back. Um, so this is a great thing just to keep on your fridge every time you pass it. Just a quick reminder, just to pray for um, the work in this school. 
Um, on the back, there's also a QR code, and that will link directly to our website. So that has more information. We do have a website set up um, that has more information, and there's also an interest survey. Um, if you wanted to fill that out, if you um, wanted to go ahead and just um, say if you're interested in potentially sending your kiddos here, potentially working at the school, coming alongside and supporting in other ways, um, this is all that, a link to that on the QR code. Um, and then we also have just the different distinctives that we've talked about, our abide, equip, and contend, our mission statement. So these are just great pieces to have to remember. Um, and then the last thing we have in here is just some upcoming dates for Calvary Christian Academy that I wanted to talk to you about. So May 7th, in about a little over a month, we're going to be having a prospective teacher's information meeting during the third service here in the fellowship hall. So if you are interested in all just learning different opportunities to um, serve part-time, full-time, we're still working out exactly what our needs are. But if you are interested in learning more about that, we would love for you to come. We'll have some information for you. We'd like to talk about some of the different trainings that we have coming up. You'll see in July 2023, there's a teacher training in Rockbridge Academy that is excellent. And so if you are interested in all and potentially teaching, that would be a great opportunity. We'd love to send you um, to that. We'll have another churchwide meeting July 16th, and we'll have a uh, kind of a Q&A panel. We'll have some um, kiddos and teens that have gone through the classical Christian education model be able to share their experience, what it's looked like for them, what they've learned. Um, so that's going to be a great, and we'll be able to give you a little more updates on where we are at that time. November 11th of this year, we'll have an admissions open house and enrollment will begin if you are wanting to send your kiddo. That is the time. That is the date. We would love to have you come there. Put that on your calendar. Um, open admissions. And so that process will kind of go until March, um, the admissions process that we will have. Um, and then we'll have open house for our students in August of 2024 and start school in September of 2024. So that is so exciting, and it is going to fly by. Um, it is going to come quick, and we are just so excited, um, and we're so we were thrilled to be able to give you just a sneak uh, peek of where we are in the process, where the Lord is leading, the different people that are involved, um, and we will continue to update and communicate with you. And if you have any questions, just come and talk to us, and we'd love to talk more to you about it, and we will be giving you more information as we go through our processes. We just wanted to take a couple minutes now to break into some, um, spend some time in prayer for Calvary Christian Academy. If we wanted to kind of just kind of touch base with the people around you, we have different areas that we can pray for um, with our school, our staff, parents, students, and our church body. So we're just going to take a couple minutes if you wanted to break into groups of people around you and pray, and then Dave's going to come up and close us in prayer. So, and then, yeah. There'll be time if you have any questions after the meeting. So I'll give you a couple minutes to do that.
I'm going to go ahead and close this out in prayer. Thank you again for coming. Again, I encourage you to review the information that was in the folder that was handed to you. Um, participate in the interest survey. Again, if you are interested in enrolling students, if you're interested in, in helping in a, in a non-student way, <laughs> if you want to give, any, any of those things, the uh, interest survey will kind of lead you down a path based on how you answer the questions to, to get to how you can get involved. So let's pray. Oh Lord, we thank you that you love children. Lord, that you um, exhorted all of us, Lord, to have a faith of a child. And, Lord, it's our desire to, to train children up in the way that they should go. Lord, to partner with parents. Lord, we, we pray for the parents in this community of believers, Lord, as um, it's just becoming more and more difficult to find like-minded people in our society, Lord, that have committed their way to you. And so, Lord, we desire as a church family to come alongside them, Lord, to partner with them in directing children's hearts towards you. Lord, we know that that's your desire as well. Lord, we pray that we'd be of one accord like the early church was, Lord, that we would be known for unity and that this ministry of this church, Lord, would be one that is unified. And so would you raise up those you've equipped or those that you have given spiritual gifts to, to participate in accomplishing what it is that you desire for this ministry to be. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for uh, how you have brought an idea to fruition. And we just ask, Lord, as we continue to prepare for the way ahead, that you would give uh, the leaders of the school wisdom and discernment, Lord, that you would provide for every need. Lord, we know that it is you that is building your church. And we ask, Lord, that we would be submitted to you in every way and that you would get all of the glory. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, okay. Yeah, if anyone has questions, those of us that you saw up on stage will be hanging around, so feel free to come find one of us.